What's up, divers? Welcome to a new episode. Uh, we just released an article, five ways to increase your scuba income. And um, we had some questions about that right away. So I decided to turn it into a video. Maybe we can uh, zoom in a little bit on some of the topics. Now, these tips aren't necessarily gonna work for everybody. And as a matter of fact, you don't need five tips that'll work for you. You just need one that's maybe a start to a good idea and then you can start working with that. Um, we just launched a poll on Instagram asking people if they were satisfied with their uh, income as a scuba professional. And uh, I think I got a staggering 85% who said, meh, could be better. So, um, as always, if you like this type of content, if you uh, want to receive more, maybe hit the subscribe button. There's also like the bell button for notifications, uh, so you get updates on when these videos get released. So let's get started here. The first uh, tip that we had for you guys was to find a niche and specialize. Um, that's probably the most on the nose uh, tip because it goes along the lines of continue your education which always seems a bit like a sales ploy when your, your trainer uh, tells you, you know, you should probably specialize, get that enriched air certification, get that, um, you know, photography instructor certification. But it's simple. I mean, maybe you have a favorite store, maybe you have a favorite coffee shop. Uh, you know, you're, you're only going to keep going for so long if they don't innovate. So it's really also very important for you as a scuba professional to offer something new once in a while. And if that something new can be something that you really like, something you love doing, uh, people are gonna feel that. People are gonna pay you good money just to spend time with you and to learn about things that they're interested in as well. Um, the, the story that I kind of brought up here is, is me a couple of years ago buying my first full face mask, getting certified in a, it was a full face uh, distinctive specialty at the time because there was no standardized outline. Um, and in, in a warm water Caribbean environment, there's, there's no real use for that. There's no immediate practical application but it was new and people were intrigued. Uh, somehow it just hit the spot with all the, um, you know, the, the, with all the divers who love dive gear and, and we got the ball rolling and, and it's still actually one of our more successful specialties uh, to this day. So uh, don't get stale, don't stick to the open water, advanced rescue, uh, A, you're gonna burn out and B, uh, you gotta find that thing that actually keeps you going uh, and, and you're gonna feel that on your paycheck at the end of the day for sure. Number two is hone in and cash in on your design skills. So um, that's what that's obviously not for everybody. You know, maybe you have a very uh, keen eye for the visual, um, but there are some easy ways to deliver great content uh, without having necessarily the greatest skills. You know, maybe you don't know Photoshop, maybe you don't know Illustrator, but every dive shop needs content, uh, whether it's for Facebook, Instagram, making flyers, posters, the website, what have you. Um, there's there's usually a high demand for that and um, I actually put in the article and I'll, I'll link it below as well but a couple of um, resources that I find really useful is for instance canva.com uh, they have a bunch of uh, templates that, I, that you can drag your own photos uh, into it you can you can put your own text you know maybe you're maybe you're offering that new full face mask course and you want to advertise it on on your website then then this is or on the dive center's website or social media this is a great way to do that quickly and you you might be surprised um what a what a relief it could be to to your employer that you apparently now have these skills so the other one the other app that i think is really useful really good to know uh is uh spark adobe spark it's it's actually the same concept there's templates and you can switch out the text, the images and create something that's visually uh, appealing and use it as, as social media posts and what have you. Now you may be able to take this further. Maybe you're a, a very good underwater photographer, videographer, maybe you're a web developer. Uh, these are all highly sought after skills um, in, in, in the diving world uh, that you should really be able to cash in on if you have the skill. And again, not the highest skill level is required to produce a relatively good result. 
Number three, and I swear by this, run yourself as a business. Um, most of us, you know, if you've had jobs before your scuba job, uh, you're probably used to working for a boss or an employer. And so it's easy to kind of just follow the instructions, do what's expected, kick back and enjoy the ride, so to speak. Um, this is not really true in the, uh, in the dive world. Even if you are working for an employer, even if there are, uh, you know, rules to follow, Usually we tend to have to be a little bit more self-guided and uh, depending on where you work, if you work outside of the United States, outside of the European Union, there's a really good chance that you're probably missing out on some benefits that you would otherwise have. I'm thinking vacation money, 13 months, maybe, um, you know, unemployment benefits, social security. So it's very, very, very important to have a very good understanding of how much you're actually making and how much your lifestyle costs, right? Uh, what I do is I, I keep spreadsheets of everything. So I, every single expense that I've made, every flight I've taken, every piece of equipment that I've bought over the year, uh, I put that in there, keep track of it. And then all the income that I have, whether it's from teaching courses, uh, I, I, I keep very good track of that. So you have a very good understanding of what you're making. Because what that'll do is it will allow you to uh, designate a percentage every year, every month, every two weeks that goes into savings. Now, I know, you know, feedback I get from a lot of people is, well, I don't have anything that can go into savings. The point is a little bit that unless you are going to decide on a percentage and just put that into savings, um, you're not going to do it. Like if, if you're just going to look at every paycheck every month and, and spend it and see what's left at the end, well, there's nothing is ever going to be left. There's always more dive toys to buy. There's always more courses to take. So just decide on a percentage, 10%, 20%, whatever works for you, really. Um, I think a lot of financial experts will agree that 30% is actually where it's at, but that's that's not easy. I get that, especially if you live abroad. Um, so just figure out what works for you. Maybe even do a simulation. If you can go back and see what you earned and what you spent in 2018, last year, and you can somehow see how much money slipped through the cracks, that would probably be a great way of making a simulation of how much you could have saved. But this is something that you can do today. You can get started on this today. Keep Start keeping track today. Um, our, our financial life tends to be a bit of a mess uh, as scuba instructors. Uh, that's usually, if, you know, especially if you live abroad, uh, it's it's hard sometimes, different currencies, transferring money. One app that, that I just discovered, uh, thanks to my buddy Esa, uh, which I highly recommend is TransferWise. Uh, if you work abroad, if you do not have a um, local bank account, and if you're losing a lot of money with transfer fees or just generally keeping track where your money is, local currency, foreign currencies. Um, TransferWise allows you to send, receive, transfer uh, currencies at a very, very low rate. So uh, I find that, that that really helps uh, in keeping track uh, of what I'm doing, where my money is going. Um, because again, at the end of the day, it's all about understanding how much your life costs and how much you're making. Number four is uh, diversify. Um, it's a very common expression to not put all your eggs in one basket, yet somehow all the Facebook posts, all the, the Instagram quotes are, you know, find that one thing you love and just do that forever and get really good at it. And what, to an extent, I agree, you know, if you want to be successful, you got to be really with it. You got to put the effort in. Um, it's a little bit naive to think that you got to find this one thing and this one thing's going to be perfect. And you love scuba diving, you're going to teach scuba diving forever and it's the only thing you'll do because otherwise you can't be happy. Um, what if, you know, imagine that 10%, 20%, maybe even 30% of your time is actually spent doing something else. Maybe something you like a little bit less, maybe something that, um, you know, maybe you, maybe you work in a bar, you know, that's possible. Or maybe you work online, you know, maybe you do data entry or, or uh, there, there's so many things you can do on the side or after hours that are a steady source of income aren't necessarily your favorite thing to do, but if that enables you to live the lifestyle that you wanted, uh, maybe that's worth it. 
I did include um, two examples that I think are really cool. These are um, former students of mine who've released their own projects. One of them is yogadivergirl.net who teaches um, yoga classes as well as scuba diving classes and they kind of blur into one another which I think is a really great idea. And then the other one is uh, spacefisharmy.com uh, and she designs um, leggings, rash guards, t-shirts that are uh, ocean themed so there's a very clear niche there it's not necessarily scuba divers but ocean enthusiasts let's say um, and and she has a web store so she just kind of generates a little bit of a passive income I don't know if it's passive you know obviously you have to put effort in it but she generates a little bit of an income on the side so these are all things you can do uh, besides just teaching or guiding divers right uh, the fifth uh, point we have here uh, and that's really one that that I think is is huge is um, have the conversation. Have the conversation with um, yourself. What do I need? How much do I need? What will make me happy? This is dependent on where you live, where you work. You know, if you're working maybe in uh, Hawaii, you're gonna need a little bit more than if you're working in, let's say, Koh Tao in Thailand, because cost of living, right? But you need to have a clear and realistic goal of how much you want to make. Maybe it's a thousand bucks, maybe it's three thousand bucks. You know, again, it really depends. Um, and you need to have that conversation with your employer. Because if they don't know what your expectations are, and you haven't clearly defined them, then there's no real goal to work towards. Now, it's, I'm not saying go to your boss and say, I wanna make three grand a month. Um, but what I am saying is, if you feel like it's not working, maybe have the conversation. Say, hey, the cost of living is such that this no longer works for me. You also need to have the conversation with yourself though in whether what you're doing, whether the level of service, the quality that you're delivering warrants uh, how much you want to make. Maybe it works out, maybe it doesn't. Maybe you're in a market that's very saturated with dive professionals and you simply can never expect to achieve your goal. Or maybe you're in a market where uh, you, you realize you actually need to be a little bit more qualified, which brings us back to point one, find your niche. Maybe you need to be a little bit more specialized to make your goal work. But if you don't have a goal, if you're just counting paycheck to paycheck, or as we said in point three, if you just analyze what comes in but you don't set any goals and you don't take any active steps like in point four to work towards that you're you're probably never gonna get there and you're forever gonna wonder why and i would say lastly in having that conversation um if it's not working out if this is sort of the maximum that you can get in this environment and it doesn't work for you then that's probably a good cue to just um you know take the step Find, uh, find something else, find a different place, different employer, different location um, that will work for you. But this is all about taking responsibility for your own income, right? At the end of the day, you know what you need to be comfortable, to be happy. Maybe you're just happy with the lifestyle and then don't complain. Or maybe that lifestyle needs to be supplemented with an income that works for you, but know what it is, right? Because then you can actually strive towards it. Um, so these are our five tips for increasing your income as a scuba professional. Uh, if I would have to pick one that I think is the most important one, it's to run yourself as a, a miniature business. Understand what comes in, what goes out, keep spreadsheets, keep actual track of that uh, so you have data to work with because then you can set goals, try to achieve those goals, give yourself a, a deadline within which you maybe want to achieve those goals uh, and you'll see that it actually makes a, a big difference, right? I hope you guys found this interesting. If uh, you have topics in mind that you would want us to cover, maybe put in the comments below. We'll be happy to do that. Again, I realize these tips don't work for everybody in every environment, but maybe there's one of those that actually uh, ring a bell somehow that you can implement. Um, and if not, let us know if you have any questions and we'll be happy to help. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.